the area. Um, I was a digital animation student, but kind of under that umbrella, and I'm sure it's similar with you guys as well, we were taught a lot of different topics kind of under that, everything from graphic design to animation, and it kind of helped me figure out where I want to kind of hone in on not only with what I wanted to learn and what I wanted to specialize in going forward, but also what type of industries I wanted to work in, what kind of lended themselves to those skills and where I wanted to end up, where I could see myself working. So I graduated in 2014 with a Bachelor of Science degree, digital animation major. And since then, I now live in Baltimore, obviously, working for the Ravens. Um, I used to live in the Philly area. I'm not only from here, but I used to live in the area after graduation, kind of you know, taking whatever work I could get. And um, I do have a copy of my reel. It's a little bit outdated, so bear with me. But um, kind of showing off some of my stuff and uh, to kind of give you guys an idea if you don't have kind of reels or you know, not building that yet, uh, what yours may look like in the future. So take a look. Might have sound, might not. And I think it should, but, but we'll see. In case it doesn't, it's yeah. more about the visual. But we'll see. We'll yeah. see if it does have sound. top one being videography that basically means filming editing just everything on the video side videography like seeing something through from start to finish kind of planning out your shoots what shots you might want to get maybe you have a shot list or something like that but then the actual filming and then going back and doing the editing so videography is kind of like an all-encompassing kind of like you know being the shooter the editor just being the whole video side of something and then editing obviously I'm sure you're all familiar with that. Back in the lab, I'm linear editing, just piecing something together. This is something that I really like because it's taking something that you have an idea of how you want it to look, but not really seeing that vision in front of you until you're able to piece it together. Slowly, kind of back in the lab, just putting different bits of video together to make a cohesive product. So editing is something that I really like doing that I'm sure you each have something specialized that you like to do that you want to focus on. Motion graphics, obviously those are the little touches to different video kind of overlays, typography, graphic design, all that type of stuff that kind of spice the video up and make it look even better that add different elements to it to really give it that extra pop. Live production, so especially in sports, this is kind of dealing with a production that is almost kind of happening in real time. So coordinate, coordinating different things, working with different people and really 
kind of not just shooting a project and then editing it, but deal, dealing with that kind of stuff in real time where, uh, let's say for a broadcast, you're kind of working with different people close to you, kind of in a press box or control room type <coughs> setting where you're putting on a live show for people. So, you know, you may not be dealing with things like lighting, but whatever you are kind of working on in that setting, maybe it's uh, kind of switching between different feeds or maybe it's doing something like um, editing a highlights package of things that may have just happened a few minutes ago. So live production is something that, you know, you can try to teach as best you can, but you never really experience it until you get in there and you do it for yourself. Visual effects, um, pretty self-explanatory, you know, this is something that does tie into sports as well, kind of taking something and kind of adding almost like an augmented reality type feel to it, just adding in an element that is not quite motion graphics, but just kind of enhances the video and adds maybe another dimension sort of to it. Animation, obviously, um, you know, kind of, you can tie it into all those different things where you're kind of seamlessly transitioning between motion graphics and uh, video and really tie that into animating everything and you know just giving things motion and giving them life and really you know breathing uh, life into a project. Graphic design obviously that's pretty self-explanatory too um, you know there may not be a lot of people in your specialty maybe but um, it is something that you know you might try your hand down and might be good at and it's something that's really necessary in today's day and age alongside the video side of things where you know, you're crafting something creative and you're really trying to grab people's attention with text or with um, different design elements to really kind of make something visually that's, you know, not necessarily in motion but still attention grabbing. And then obviously photography, kind of like uh, the cousin of videography where obviously you take a lot of still photos but there's still definitely an art to it and it's definitely still something that's kind of on the the brink of you know video where you have to have a lot of the same principles to shoot something good and then turn out a good final product. So those are all the kind of different <coughs> skills that I use on a daily basis in some way, shape, or form. So um, now I'm going to kind of go through and say how I apply each of those to different things that I do today. So freelancing. Uh, this was more something that I did kind of coming out of college that, um, you know, if I have the time or the patience to do these days, I might still, but uh, freelancing is like when you're still looking for that first full-time gig and you just really need to start building that portfolio and working on projects. You know, you have to learn how to deal with clients, you have to learn how to plan things out, how to kind of juggle multiple projects at once and kind of show clients that you're a professional and you're not just someone just who just came out of college and is still getting their feet wet, but somebody who could create a really good project for them and kind of working with them, maybe not on a full-time basis, but uh, whenever you <coughs> kind of schedule it and really learning how to deal with the logistics of building your portfolio and building out those first couple of projects. So these aren't videos, these are just still frames of some of the projects I worked on when I started freelancing way back when I first graduated back in 2014 when I came out of school. And when I was still living at home, these were a couple of projects that I made for a client who was right around the corner where I was just kind of pounding the pavement, taking whatever I could get. And a, this client came from Craigslist, just uh, somebody local who wanted a video made that had no background in video, didn't know how to make something like that. So we sat down and after a lot of hashing out, we eventually came out to a final product about what he wanted it to kind of look like and slowly but surely we put that together. I would kind of go home and work on it in bits and pieces, bring them in. And it's a little bit of a slow process when you're working some, with somebody who doesn't understand video that well, but it's still important to kind of get them to understand it because they do have a vision and it's important to, to learn that process to get used to it because no matter where you end up, you're gonna always kind of deal with somebody who maybe not as knowledgeable as you, but you know still has a vision that, that they want to see fulfilled. So. Um, so these were a couple different projects. The first one up above the purple there was one where he wanted to capture kind of the mission statement of his company. So he wanted to accurately describe in sort of a long form video, long form being about two minutes, but again, something that wasn't just a sentence that was plastered on their website. So he wanted to kind of capture the essence of his company and what they do and what they're really about. So he kind of, you know, ran some ideas by me and again, there's give and take with every client. So we kind of went back and forth, you know, not in a 
uh, argumentative way, but more of a, hey, how about this, how about this type of thing. So, um, and he really liked how the finished product came out, tried to incorporate a little <coughs> color into it, because again, just working with someone who's maybe not in a creative field, they don't really necessarily think in rainbow and bright and colorful and design oriented. So, um, but of course, you know, he may not know that this is what he wanted to look like at the beginning, but of course he was happy with the final product. And then the second one was just a, kind of like an example of all the different things this kind of company did. This was showing off one particular aspect. So uh, the name of this company was Grill Kids. So this was really simple. This was more just like a filming a talking head type of thing. So again, if this was more just a project that his company handled that he wanted to show off instead of the overarching theme of the first video. So um, this was just kind of like setting up uh, some equipment um, just going to his office, just saying, all right, just gather yourself. What do you want to say? Do you want to do a script? Do you want to kind of do it off the cuff? Or just running different things by him because, again, he had an idea of what he wanted to say, but not necessarily um, in what order or where he wanted it to kind of come in the video, if he wanted it edited together differently. So, you know, and as always, when you got something like this with somebody talking on camera, took a couple takes to kind of get it all the way through correctly. So. Uh, but again, this one was pretty simple, just kind of filming him kind of talking and just including a lower third with a little bit of information to kind of give some viewer more information instead of just, um, you know, if, let's say they can't hear the audio for some reason, just still kind of cluing in viewers on what the video is about. So um, it doesn't really show it in the still frame here, but just having little kind of words coming on the computer screen here. So again, just to be a little bit more visual, if for some reason the person who's viewing the video can't hear it, that they can still tell what's going on. So those are a couple of freelance examples. I haven't really worked in freelance a lot since then, but still very important. So what I do with the Baysox, so full time, I am the director of video production with the Bowie Baysox. So for those of you who are familiar with baseball, you have the major league teams. So in this case, the Orioles, and then right under that are the minor leagues. So you have a triple A, a double A, single A, and then a bunch of levels under that. So the Bowie Bay Sox, the double A affiliate of the Orioles, um, in some ways they're directly below because geographically they're the closest to Baltimore. So whenever they have kind of an injured player come through and uh, they want to get him back up to Baltimore as soon as possible, it's almost like this is the, the stop instead of triple A, which is way down in Virginia. But um, so what I did with them, Again, I'm the director of video production, so everything video-wise, start to finish, kind of goes through me. So everything, uh, I listed off a bunch of the skills, everything from graphic design to 3D animation is kind of what I'm working on day after day. And a lot of it is obviously dealing with projects that come up during the season, so stuff for in-house production that's shown on the video board during home games or other team events. but when it's not the season, for, for instance, right now we're in the off season. We're not playing baseball right now. Season starts in April. It's much like the MLB season where it just starts and ends a little bit earlier and later. But um, So we're in the off season right now, but uh, again, there's just so much prep that goes into it because there's a lot of visual stuff that you want to show from headshots of the players to hype videos to kind of get the crowd excited to motion graphics and sponsor assets where you need to create something for the people who pay our bills to keep the lights on. So for instance, these are two still frames from a couple projects I worked on. So the top one was from a few years ago where we actually um, worked with uh, an organization that was bringing the Pope to, I think it was DC back a few years ago. But um, basically it was kind of like an initiative where we worked with one of our players who is now a uh, starting Oriole, uh, Trey Mancini, for those of you who are familiar with baseball and the Orioles. but Basically, uh, Trey was um, basically a big uh, fan and wanted to do something to kind of spread the initiative that was kind of going with this walk with uh, Francis Hashtag, where it was kind of like an exercise to bring awareness to the Pope kind of coming in and wanting to spread, you know, good words all. So, um, so that was a good example of kind of working with one of these players, and again, it's kind of like working with a client, but you also, especially if you're working in sports, you don't want to try to be intimidated by people that you work with. Just treat them like regular human beings. So Trey, who's a really down-to-earth person, um, you know, just directing him and kind of telling him where he needs to go or asking him his opinion on what he wanted to get out of the video or anything he wanted to 
add in outside of the script that the front office kind of came up with him for him to say and for the initiative. So um, just working with players and just kind of making it, again, interesting, but also, you know, kind of adding their opinion to it as well. And then the bottom one was for a St. Patrick's Day video that I did with the team. So just something to kind of remind people on social media where this was put out. Hey, we're still here. We're not playing baseball right now, but the season's coming up, so get excited type of thing. So this is a good example of, uh, for instance, every year um, on different holidays or different team events, the organization wants me to put out something to get people excited, to uh, perk their interest, whatever their, you know, the occasion is. And for St. Patrick's Day, it's kind of like a holiday where it's like, hey, let's do a fun video related to the holiday somehow that has a team message to it. So something I try not to do when I work on different projects is repeat myself. So for instance, you kind of saw in there back in the reel a snippet of a holiday video that I did a while back. And obviously holidays, they come once a year. and I've been with the organization for about four years now. So I try not to repeat myself whenever they say inevitably every year, hey, let's do a video that has a team message to it that we can put out on this holiday. So, you know, it gives me a good chance to try out different things and to really say like, okay, let me push myself a little bit further and see what I can do that I haven't done before. So, for instance, this was kind of like a hype video that I did where instead of like uh, involving like a skit with our green mascot or doing something with like, you know, somebody dressing up as a leprechaun or something like that, doing a hype video with this kind of green overlay to it and this uh, tag not tag on that kind of ties into the hot holiday a little bit says who needs luck. So um, just something different like that to try to mix it up and keep things fresh, even if you're kind of working on the, the same project, but not really, you know, just trying new things and really trying to keep pushing yourself forward to give yourself something new to learn. And then finally, uh, like Jeff said before, I work for the Ravens, so I work uh, part-time for them. So when they have home games, when they're in season, I go in and I'm kind of a uh, freelancer with them within the organization. So two years ago was my first year with them, so I was actually a assistant to a uh, roving camera operator. So basically, this wasn't even the guy that I worked with full-time. This was just a TV grant that somebody sent me. But, um, so basically, my job for the first season was kind of scouting for different shots. So the guy behind the camera who's really focusing in on and can't really get a sense of his surroundings, can't really see the entire stadium. So scouting for shots, I would kind of tell him like, oh, the guy talking in his ear wants crazy fans. Like, oh, there's somebody dressed up in a cowboy hat or there's somebody over there. So there was that and then again, you know, especially with an organization like this, you know, they want the biggest and the best shots. So you really kind of have to get up in players' faces and get those really close, epic shots. So again, kind of looking through the lens, he didn't really have a good spatial awareness. It's hard to you know have that when you're looking through the camera. So you know, I was kind of almost like a bodyguard for him, trying to tell him to watch out for players or for members of the media because down on the field it gets pretty crowded. So scouting for shots, kind of being a spatial awareness, kind of second set, set of eyes, and then also any equipment needs. If he maybe needed to jump on another assignment really quick nearby, like another camera goes down and needs another support, that I was able to just hop on his camera for a second and kind of take that over. Or if maybe we were running low on batteries, kind of run to the locker room and grab some of those. But basically a set of, second set of eyes and ears that's still just even shadowing somebody who still pick up so much and it's still just invaluable no matter how small the job is to just pick up what experience you can gain from it and use it in the future. And then this year, um, my boss at the Ravens kind of contacted me before the season and said, hey, our normal um, RoboCam operator is not gonna be here this year, he has a bunch of commitments, would you like to do that instead? And I said, of course, you know, give me again, another bit of experience in a different area that I hadn't yet. So what I did this year for them, I worked in the control room during games. So my station, uh, I had about 10 to 15 robotic cameras that I was operating around the stadium. So um, if you've ever seen the control room of a major sports stadium, basically a big wall of monitors, 15 different angles of various places around the arena. So basically I'd have this little control panel, kind of like a joystick and a ton of buttons. And I would get different views of the arena depending on what was needed. 
So some basically stay still the entire time because they're capturing the video board or they're capturing something else that we just want to still shot of for most of the time. But other ones, you know, I'd just be pivoting around and again, but it really gave me another bit of experience that I can use in my next job and kind of put on my resume and say, hey, I did this and point people towards. So um, it was really fun. You know, this was part of it where after games, we had a RoboCam in the, uh, I guess we'd call this like the press conference room where the players would give post-game addresses to the press and the Ravens would put that out on social media immediately afterwards. They would garner thousands to millions of views depending on what happened during the game or who the player was. But this was on me to <coughs> capture this and make sure it was a good angle and you have players of different heights that come up and players that um, wearing purple jerseys that maybe blended too much into the background where you kind of have to adjust different settings and get a better shot of. So it was definitely a good challenge and definitely, again, another thing that I didn't see myself doing before the season, but I really enjoyed and it gives me that extra bit of uh, recognition on my resume for what I did. So how to get there. It may seem like a big jumping off point to go from a student to working for probably what many people would say one of the biggest NFL organizations today this season, but um, it's really a bunch of different steps, kind of taking it little bits at a time. So school projects, the stuff you're working on right now, um, it may seem like it's homework, but really it's gonna be the building blocks for your portfolio going forward. So it may seem like a lot of other social commitments kind of get in the way of schoolwork and it's better to just kind of finish a project 70% and get a passing grade, but Really, um, in hindsight, I wish I would have put more time into my school projects because, again, they were kind of like the building blocks of my portfolio and they really kind of were something to show future employers as soon as I got out of school to say, hey, here's what I did or here's how, yes, this was a school project, but it still has this very professional look and feel to it and it matches up with what you want me to do. So I've actually gone back and improved a lot of my school projects, ideas that at the time, I was really behind and that I wanted to see fulfilled to the best of their ability. So I've actually gone back and redone some of the ones that were a little more lackluster and reposted those kind of on my portfolio, on my website, or in my reel to say, hey, this is the full vision of what I originally intended for my project and I'm proud of where it stands now. Um, network, it's I'm sure it's a cliche, but it's absolutely necessary, unfortunately, because I've never been a bit, big fan of networking, but um, just try to meet as many people as you can, even somebody who you feel like might not be a c good connection in the future, just you never know they could have a relative who knows somebody who has a friend who works for that exact organization that you're trying to be a part of. So, for instance, um, I, uh, my girlfriend and I started dating about two years ago and down in Maryland, and ironically, her brother for about seven or eight years had been the head of video production for the University of Maryland Athletics Department. So University of Maryland, Big Ten School, uh, national recognition, and it just so happened that he was their head honcho on the video side for a number of years and was able to give me a lot of good insight and was able to give me further connections and to really build uh, the number of people in my network. So, um, you know, that was just a funny occurrence, but the more you get out and talk to different people who have been in different industries and have experienced different things, the more knowledge you're gonna be able to retain and use going forward. Building connections kind of ties into that, but again, just, uh, you know, not just kind of hitting up that person that you met one, one time for their usefulness and then never talking to them again. Some people, you know, you could use for their professional connections, but again, you could garner a really good relationship out of that. And um, down the line, let's say they end up, again, in an organization that you really want to be a part of, but you haven't spoken to them for 10 years, well, you know, there might be somebody closer to them that also wants the job that is probably a good lead-in from them. So you really want to kind of, you know, grow those connections and really network and reach out to as many people as possible and really do the same. So when somebody comes to you and says, hey, can you do me this favor? Or hey, can you put in a good word with me with your boss because I'm trying to work where you are? And that way you can kind of repay the favor and do the same for them. Being proactive. Something, a really good piece of advice somebody gave me once, that somebody being the head of video production for the Washington Nationals baseball team, he said, don't even wait for people to reach out to you or potential employers to respond to your application. Proactively make something for them. 
So for instance, um, you know, just on your own time, using stuff that's online or maybe stuff that you create by hand, make like a Washington Nationals video that looks really great that, you know, is something that they don't really have on their social media and then, you know, email that link to the person that's working there even if they don't have an open job. Because if they see that and they really like what, they, what you're doing, say, wow, like, we really need to hire this person, but we don't really have an opening, so you know what, let me take this awesome video that you made and let me recommend you to this other guy who does have an open position. So really be proactive and just, even if you don't see any openings with the company you're trying to really make headway on, just do something you know, for them and show some initiative and make something that you can still use for your reel where um, somebody stops and says, well, like, whoa, did you really work for you know, the Nationals or something or just you know, really getting people's attention? Staying motivated, it can get really tough, kind of not burning out, you know, doing the same thing day after day if you're with the same employer for a number of years, or if you, again, are just plugging away, putting out application after application, and just, it doesn't seem like you're making any headway. Um, there's always something out there. It may not seem like it at the time, but um, especially in sports, and I'm sure in the job market as well, it's really feast or famine. There's some weeks where you'll have a bunch of different offers that you think, hey, this could work out, and I could have a job. Or it may seem like there hasn't been something that has come around for a while, but the key is to stay motivated. You, you're doing this because you like it for a reason, and just remember what that reason is, and just you know stay humble and keep uh, motivating yourself to work harder. And then paying it forward. I kind of touched on this earlier, but something that um, you know you really should do, no matter what industry you end up is in, is when students like you kind of come to you ten years down the line and say, "Hey, I'm really trying to break into your company." Will you take some time to talk with me or take a look at my work? Absolutely do that. It doesn't just make you look like a good person. It's paying it back and it's good karma from when you're trying to do this right now. It's doing that same thing down the line where um, it's the whole reason why I'm here today because uh, Professor Baby was a really good professor for me in school and I'm a big believer in people who are trying to get their start not only in the sports industry but in the job market that you really need to help them out as much as possible because at the end of the day, we all want to see each other succeed, and the more you do that, the more, you know, not only makes you feel good in here, but it also makes you look good to your employers, your coworkers, and also it's, you know, paying it back for when you were a kid starting out trying to make a name for yourself. So, just wrapping things up, um, I just want to, again, thank you guys for having me, um, and thank Professor Baby for inviting me as well. I hope. Uh, something for me today even if you don't really feel like starting out in the sports industry that you gained a little bit of knowledge into how to kind of start your career as, as a professional and maybe uh, kind of come out of this with a different attitude so um, absolutely don't hesitate to reach out um, LinkedIn probably the biggest avenue but um, if there's some other form of communication sending out a rating something just Hit me up and, um, you know, any way I can be of service to you guys kind of starting out on your career, uh, absolutely feel free to let me know. <coughs> so, um, kind of open it now to some Q&A. I yeah. have some, like, scripted oh, uh, questions. Yeah, I have, I have your questions that you asked, but um, I want to, I mean, if anyone has any questions they want to ask out loud in person, they're, they're welcome to do that. Anyone, I mean, these were good questions you guys wrote. Does anyone want to, go ahead, Nate. Um, so I saw that when I, I was reading uh, your website or portfolio, and um, I saw you said you like you like to use like pop culture like influences, and like I saw a little bit of that. But what do you think is like one of the biggest ways that you know it, you've seen it affect the like, projects you worked on? And also, um, I guess do you so when you see like something um, like a trend that's going on in, in like currently in like social media or in general, the trend or memes or something like that. Do you find, I mean, it looks like you did, find ways to incorporate that into some of your video work or production work, and do you get to make those decisions, or do you kind of collaboratively come up with ideas? Sure, so pop culture is obviously a big influence on, you know, the whole of society. So, you know, no matter if you're working for a sports team or a different company that wants to get in on something trending, they either have an idea of what it is or they just say to you, hey, what's a thing that a lot of kids are really watching these days, like a meme that's funny or like a, something that's trending on Twitter that we can get in on and put our own spin on. So that's absolutely something that no matter who your employer is, especially if it's a sports team that 
um, have active social media channels that they really want to keep um, relevant and they want to keep interesting and funny to their millions of fans who watch their content every day, that's definitely something where pop culture plays a big influence and in that you saw kind of earlier in the real, you know, we were doing um, that video in particular, the mascot doing the floss, um, that was a Thanksgiving video that I did where, again, just try not to repeat anything I did in the past. For that Thanksgiving video, what I did was, um, there was an intro at the beginning saying, let's focus, it's Thanksgiving, let's focus on what's really important this time of year, which is perfecting your touchdown dances for family football. And we all get together to play a game of touch football or something, so um, what that was, having the mascot do a bunch of different dances, some modern ones, some older ones, but again, pop culture, big influence on that, and then just not only for sports employers, but people in general. So um, it's always a little bit of give and take about what you want to do versus your employers. So especially for the people I was talking about before who might not be as creatively inclined, you got to kind of make them try to see the vision as clear as possible before you get started so you don't get the end product done and then they say, wait, I didn't want it like this. So. Um, it's always a little bit of give and take saying, here's what I think is a good idea and your employer says I want to do this. So compromise is the name of the game. You always try to make it work the best you can, but um, definitely pop culture plays a big influence, I think, on a lot of the stuff out there because you see a lot of the same designs trending on certain things and a lot of the same looks and feels for different type of funny or relevant things out there these days. So absolutely pop culture. If there's something out there that you want to do a again like a kind of a self project with and show some initiative and be proactive absolutely just take something that's trending and kind of put your own spin on and make a, a video or project out of it because that way if it still is by the time you're finished then maybe it'll get you some extra views and some more attention and leave something good. Do you find live production stressful since it's live? I'm sorry? Do you find live production stressful since it's live? Um, a little bit when you first start out, especially in a new environment, but uh, for instance, when I first started with the Bay Sox uh, four or five years ago, um, I was only at school a year, and the person that I was taking over for was going back to school, and the timing wasn't ideal because they were going back kind of right at the beginning of the season. So basically my first, um, because during home games, I kind of operate the Jumbotron and do everything on the video side in the stadium um, during home games. So the first time that I did live production with uh, this organization, it was kind of like being thrown into the deep end where I started on Tuesday and then the first home game was on Friday. So, um, you know, it's a little intimidating starting out, but Again, it's just kind of learning the ins and outs of each organization and really getting attuned to that. And then, you know, four years, four years from that, like nowadays, I can, you know, conduct a game presentation, game presentation in my sleep. So, it's stressful starting out, but um, once you get used to the ins and outs within your organization, and especially with, you know, what it is that they want to do versus what you think you'd be doing, and you kind of get that whole process ironed out, just get all the kinks out and. Look, it's not the end of the world if you mess up, you know? Like even on a stage like the Ravens, people that have been in the control room for years and years that every game, you know, will have one or two mistakes where in front of 43, 53,000 people, uh, they'll see something on the video board that's not supposed to be there. Maybe not something inappropriate, but necessarily like the wrong player graphic or something. You know, just try and recover as quick as you can. And it's not the end of the world. You know, don't beat yourself up if you make mistakes. We're all humans, so you know it takes a little bit of getting used to, but live production, it's great to have it under your belt, especially if you want to end up in sports, and it's something that you can't really teach. It's something that you need to experience for yourself, but um, you know, once you get used to it, it's, it becomes second nature. That's a great answer. I, I like how, I like you bringing it back to, A, it's a skill that you just learned, you know, with practice, and then that um, it, as long as you're in like kind of a supportive community, like it's okay to make mistakes. It's just, uh, it's good to know. Absolutely. Because um, I know probably when you're first starting out, it probably feels like, do I deserve to be here? You know, I don't. You know, everyone else knows what they're doing, but I don't. And and I bet you there's a fair amount of that feeling, you know, when you start out. No, absolutely. Um, it doesn't matter, again, what industry you end up in, we're never done learning. There's always new stuff out there to learn, and even if you somehow master all of your craft, there's still new technology, new trends, new things to learn, new projects to put out. So 
especially in the sports world, like like Jeff was kind of saying, when I first came to the Bay Sox and my boss was walking me through that first production for Friday's game, you know, I was kind of taking in all this information he was put, he was saying to me and saying, oh my God, am I in over my head here? But again, down the line, just once you experience it, once you get it under your belt, it just becomes second nature. And it was the same thing with the Ravens where um, each task that I did like for each season, again, just that first game starting out, it's a lot of nervous energy, but you know, you do what you've been told and what you're supposed to, you just, as long as you just do your job to the best of your ability, then no one will have anything to break with you. So it was the same thing with the Ravens too, with the RoboCam station, where um, there's a ton of buttons, ton of controls, but eventually you get the hang of it. And you know, my boss, it's a great moment when your boss who directs a control room of 50 plus people, you know, kind of comes up to me and say like, hey, I really, I really love what you did with that and really kind of notices you not only on your work, but you know like, okay, I was doing it the best of my ability, but also like the best it could possibly be. Did you not get like power hungry? I've got 15 robot cameras at my disposal. <laughs> no, definitely. Um, but again, it was kind of like a, hey, the production runs smoothly because yeah. everyone does their job. You right. know, it's like if you want to kind of goof off and do some of that kind of stuff, like maybe pregame or something, then that's fine. But when you're up on the video board in front of like 50,000 people, the shot you're using, yeah. you know, if you want to keep the job that you have, if you want to keep doing a good job, then, you know, you can't really goof off. You know, you got to kind of just lock down and, and do what you need to. So, um, <coughs> so a bunch of people asked, um, do you have to like the team, or do you have to know a lot about the team that you're like, that you want to work for, or even as you're working for them, do you, do you have to like them, or do sure. you have to like be into them? Like, oh, I'm, like, were you a huge baseball fan, or a huge, you know, Bay Sox fan, or a huge Ravens fan when you started working for them? Like, is that a requirement, or or what? Um, so I guess I can answer that in a couple different ways. Where Coming out of school, and I think this is the attitude a lot of people probably need to have, is especially if you're working in sports, where you just kind of need to go where the work is. You know, it's great if you want to stay in a certain area and work there, like in Philadelphia, but, um, you know, as someone who's grown up in the Philadelphia area and has gone to school here, of course I'd love to work full-time for the Eagles or the Phillies, but um, I knew coming out of school that the right opportunities might not, not necessarily be there timing-wise. So I took what I could, what I could get, and um, instead what I did was go where there was opportunity. And that opportunity has opened doors to other opportunities, bigger opportunities, and so on and so forth. So you kind of need to go where the work is, and it's great that you want to have a final objective in mind, like I really want to work for this organization in this place, but because I'm a big fan of them, because I grew up watching them, and I want to work for them and really make their stuff better and really be on the inside. And that's great, but you really kind of need to go where the work is. And then the second part of that, once you kind of get to that level, like, again, I'm working with the Ravens right now. It's not necessarily my hometown Philadelphia Eagles, but in working with the great crew that they have and just being there on game days with that atmosphere, especially in the playoffs and just, you become a fan of the team that you work for. You know, it's, it's, and it's the same with the Bay Sox, but just using the Ravens as an example as a higher level team, you just become a Ravens fan because it's such great people that you work with and it's such great fans and energy. And even if you work for like a losing team or something, it's just great to kind of be at that level and know that you made it this far and you still have more journey to go and that, you know, hey, you wanna see the team that you work for succeed because everything's better when a team wins, but it doesn't necessarily matter if a team wins or loses, and it doesn't matter if you're working for your team or not, but it's still just great to be there, to be at that level, to know that I'm reaching my goal. Yeah, so related to that, a bunch of people asked, did you know you wanted to get into sports, like when you were in school? Was that a goal, or did that just kind of, that opportunity just kind of arise, or like how did that, how did that work out? Sure, so coming out of school, I kind of had a couple different things about where I wanted to end up that I had in mind, and they were, I wanted to either do visual effects work for major motion pictures, or I wanted to do video editing and motion graphics for professional sports teams. And not many people people can say that, but I'm living my dream and my goal that I came out of school, came out of school knowing that I wanted to do. And 
what really kind of helped me realize that was taking all the classes that I did in school and learning all these different subjects and doing all these different projects to really know, okay, I don't really like 3D animation that much, but I do like video editing. So it's really kind of techniques instead of the same, oh, I'm just gonna make it look like this every time, no matter what the project is. And really doing different stuff kind of helps you figure out what you like and don't like and what industry you might want to end up in. And again, you don't have to have a clear idea of exactly where you want to be kind of coming out of school because not every single job that I had was sports related kind of coming out of school like you saw at the beginning of the freelance but also in between there I worked for a videography company in Philadelphia that specialized in legal issues so things like depositions litigations arbitrations it was basically just filming talking heads it wasn't that creatively fulfilling but it was a paycheck. It was my first full-time job that I got, and it opened the door to the opportunity with the Bay Sox because it was something additional on my resume that they looked at and said, okay, we like what you did here. We can apply that to us. So you may end up in a different industry other than the one you want to be in and realize, hey, I like this a lot more because this is something that I didn't really see myself in, but now that I'm here, I am really like what I'm doing. So. It's great that you know what you want to do coming out of school, and it's great to have a, a plan and goals, but you may not end up there for a while, or you may end up in something different and like it even more. So it's good to keep an open mind, but um, you know, it's really great to take advantage of everything here to kind of learn what you do want to do coming out of school and kind of have those goals in mind. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a really good point. Um, also, because I, you know, I think what you, what you demonstrate or what you exemplify is the fact that there are these jobs, they're just not isolated. It's not like you're working for a video company or an animation company, right? You're doing video and animation inside the sports industry, right? And you know, some of your classmates from Philly U are working on um, you know, video and animation inside the financial technology sector or inside like the pharmaceutical sector or something like that. So. Um, Thinking about what you want to do, just not always in the context of just isolated by itself, is, is is really important. And and I will make a plug. Like here at LaSalle, it's super easy to minor, and and actually you can also double major more easily than you can do at most other places. And that's always a great way to expand your ability to, you know, get a job within a different industry beyond just kind of like what the isolated uh, industry is. Um, so several people asked, sure. um, they just asked a, a variation on the question like, what were some of the biggest obstacles or challenges you had, you know, as you're kind of taking your professional path? Sure, so um, I'm sure when you hear a lot, not only in sports, but in the job market as well, is getting your foot in the door. Um, a lot of companies out there want um, at least a little bit of experience, even for an entry level job. And that's just where building your portfolio while you're here in school and really freelancing and just, you know, churning out this great book and stuff comes in where um, a company is kind of looking at you and saying, well, you know, they're just out of school and we're just automatically not going to take them because of that. But if you have great looking stuff, then the work will speak for itself. If you have great looking stuff, great projects that, you know, look beyond your years, then people will just forget about the experience part of it and they just want to bring you on board and the work will speak for itself. But um, Going back to what Jeff was saying with different industries, obviously not everyone here is going to end up in sports, but uh, it doesn't matter what industry you do end up in because video is just such a growing need these days, and there are so many industries out there where, again, if you want to end up in one but really go to another, then it's definitely not the end of the world. Uh, end of the world because everyone from uh, corporate offices to sports teams need video and need different things in the creative field, so. Um, the different industries that you may end up in, um, they're interchangeable with video where everyone needs something. So, you know, you shouldn't knock working at this type of industry when you really want to work here because, again, like I said, I work for a videography company that specialized in legal matters where I didn't want to end up there as a future career. But the people that I worked with were really great. It was a great, steady paycheck, and it was good stuff to put on my resume and to show people in the future. So. You know, definitely inter industries aren't really that important. It's great to have an idea of where you want to be, but don't knock an opportunity that presents itself because it's not quite what you want to end up in. Mm -hmm. 
Um, does anyone have any other questions? Quite a bunch. Um, uh, let me see. I yeah, because everyone asked like kind of similar questions, um, and we you went you covered a lot of it. Um, a couple of people did ask like how it felt to be nominated for an award. You were nominated for an, for an Emmy, is that right? Emmy. I don't know that. A couple of people mentioned it on here. I don't know. We're on. Oh, okay. Well, I, yeah. I don't know where. Um, no. It, um, well. You say nominations, so yeah. I don't know what kind of metric they use or who's yeah. voting on this, but um, yeah. I've been lucky enough to work at the Ravens where, um, according to their head of entertainment, not only runs the control room, but other departments as well. Um, when we would have pregame meetings, we would consistently be at the top of the NFL in video pre presentations during the game. So things like crowd engagement and just basically our whole show put together, top of the NFL. So. It's really great to have those kind of things, to have awards and nominations, but that doesn't necessarily measure your success. You know, if you're working the best that you can and you know you're doing the right thing and you're putting out a good product and that your employer is happy with you, in certain industries there may not be any recognitions or awards or ceremonies, but that shouldn't be the thing that you're chasing after. Maybe it is, that's okay too, but um, you know, it's not really necessary to succeed in your careers to be nominated for awards and receive recognition. It's, um, it's for me at least, it's all about the personal success and how you feel at the end of the day. I think someone said you were yeah. nominated for an Oscar, but I think they meant <laughs> something else. But, um, Eva, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just curious to know, how does like weather and also how the game is going affect your production? Mm, um, good question. Because I went to the Steelers uh, Ravens game. Probably on it was a lot of rain, a lot of water. I'm just yeah, curious so about like that and like whether the winning or losing affects mm -hmm. or does it affect how how you run it. Well, obviously it depends on the industry that you're in. Uh, for people who may not be going into sports, weather might not affect you at all. You're working in the office or something like that. But. Um, you know, it's funny because the first year I was with the Ravens when I was the on-field camera <coughs> assistant, we had at least three or four games where it was terrible weather, where it was just pouring rain the entire time. And, you know, that's just a good example of how you need to adapt to the situation. So the camera crew, of course, they have equipment on hand, camera covers, uh, things like that, weather gear that kind of protect the equipment from the elements. but. Um, it kind of ties back into something that no matter what industry you're in where you're presented with a problem and you need to try to adapt to try and fix it or you know get around it so that's not something that's native to sports it's something that you're going to find across the board where you know issues happen it's it's uh, the chaos theory so you're going to just need to find the best solution and you know that really makes you all the better for it that you know okay if this goes wrong i know how to get around it so it's not something that's native to sports but you know, if you're working in an industry in a creative field that, you know, weather impacts that, you know, it's something you can't control and there's no sense in stressing about it. You just got to try to find the best solution as quick as possible for doing what you need to do. All right, and he said, and also if the team is doing poorly, is that change like, oh, we got to be more hype or we got to be less hype? Or? Yeah, I mean, um, I was kind of talking about it before yeah. where even if you worked for a team that went, uh, who's, who's like the worst team in the NFL this year? Bengals, maybe yeah, they, they were like, like two that. and fourteen, something like that. So, even if you work for a team like the Bengals, you know it's really important to still love what you do. And of course, everything's better when, if you work in sports, for instance, when your team wins. But that shouldn't dictate how you feel about your job and how much enjoyment you get out of it. You know, you still need to put on the best show that you can. So, for instance, the Bay Sox, the minor leagues are really trans transitory, where you have prospects, guys who are really talented that come up through the system where their ultimate goal is to get to the majors. So they may be with you for half the season, but their ultimate goal is to get to the big leagues. So, you know, the team is great, is performing really well when they're there, but then when they get called up, the team is terrible again. So that doesn't mean you have to put on less of a show because the team isn't doing as well. You still want to do the best that you can no matter what the situation because, you know, if you ebb and flow with how the team does, then your work is going to suffer because of it and you personally. So um, 
it may be tough to kind of have a, the same cheery attitude when the team isn't doing as well, but it's still important to really kind of try your best and you know put out the best product that you can because you know what, maybe it has an impact on the fans and maybe the fans in turn disrupt the away team and it just one thing leads to another and somehow, some way your work actually impacts the game itself. Nice. Well, uh, one last question before we end. Um, if you could have any job, but I asked the, I asked them the same question last week. Uh, if you could have any job, uh, but you know, time, reality, <coughs> physics, there were no restrictions or restraints on what you could do. What would you What would you be? Um, so I guess it kind of be what my ultimate goal is right now, kind of yeah. in my career, where um, I don't know how long it'll take or where I might be, but my ultimate goal is to kind of be where some of my bosses at the Ravens are at right now, which is a technical director or a director of production for a major sports organization. So personally, I really like the feel of working for a team like the Ravens where um, in sports especially you have uh, network jobs and you have team jobs where the network, you're traveling a lot and it's really the highest standard there is, but you know, right under that, which is still a really high standard, are the different teams kind of around the country. And I like the idea of kind of being in the same spot, working with the same group of people, but still performing at a really high level and really um, trying to get my vision, my projects to cross as many people as possible. So down the road, um, I guess if time wasn't an object, you know, I kind of fast forward to that time because I know, again, kind of doing what you're supposed to and doing all the things I was kind of talking about with networking and really pushing your connections and your work and really having a vision that eventually you can get there. So. Uh, that's probably where I'm gonna end up with that. Nice, great. Hey. A lot of people, just uh, FYI, a lot of people said wizard, like, or Pokemon trainer. That was their, that was their answer. But, um, Anybody yeah. uh, have any other questions? I think that's it. I think we're out of time. Uh, thank you so much, Mitchell. This is great. Thank you, guys.